Today, I would like to tell you about such an important issue as generating electricity and the use of nuclear power reactor for this purpose. Currently, electricity is the basis of the existence of our world and our reality. Absolutely everything that surrounds us requires a source of electricity. Let's start our day together. So, alarm clock radio, refreshing shower, cappuccino, oh sorry, it's morning. Of course, a cup of espresso from the coffee machine, toast with a fresh bread, butter, cheese, and slice of meat, cream from refrigerator, and the latest news release. And uh, that's just breakfast. Everything, absolutely everything that surrounds us need electricity. And one of the most common, oldest, and most reliable methods of generating electricity is rotating an electric generator to produce electric current. This method has found its widest application in thermal energy. Thermal power plant, TPP, is type of power plant that produces electricity by converting thermal energy obtained from burning fuel into mechanical energy and uh, then into electricity. The basic principle of operation of thermal power plants is to use the heat generated by combustion of hydrocarbon fuels, such as coal, oil, or natural gas, to heat water and convert it into steam. This steam is then expanded in steam turbines and rotates them. The rotation of the turbine is transmitted to electric generators then produce electricity. The operation of condensing power plants is based on the use of thermal energy, which is realized during the combustion of fuel to convert it into mechanical energy and only then into electrical energy. The main components of the TPP include a boiler in which a fuel, usually natural gas, coal, oil, or wood, is burned releasing thermal energy. The steam produced in the boiler is directed to a blades of the steam turbine. The steam pressure causes the turbine to rotate, which in turn causes the generator to rotate. The rotation of the generator converts the mechanical energy received from turbine into electrical energy. Then the electricity enters the network in order to be disturbed among consumers. The steam, after passing through the turbine, condenses and turns back into liquid form. This process increases the efficiency of the plant, since the heat releases during condensation can be reissued to heat water into the boiler. Heat exchangers are used to transfer heat. With the help of cooling system, the station operates stable and prevents equipment overheating. Now let's look at the operating principles of the nuclear power plant. By large, nuclear power plants are also thermal power plants. The difference with the thermal power plants lies in what heat source we use in the circuit. By heard of any nuclear power plants is the nuclear reactor. At nuclear power plants, thermal energy is obtained in nuclear reactors. Energy is uh, released due to nuclear fission reaction of uranium-5 nuclei. Uranium-5 is a type of radioactive element, uranium. Uh, the place where nuclear fission occurs is called the reactor core. In fact, at the core there is a mixture consisting of uranium-5 and uranium-8. Uh, it's this combination of uranium elements that is found in nature. The uranium-5 atom Efficiency when irradiated with neutrons, small heavy particles. Reactors use a controlled fission reaction of uranium. The neutron crushes into the nucleus of uranium atom at two speed, splitting into two parts and knocking out other neutrons. These neutrons fly out at great speed and crash into neighboring uranium nuclei, knocking neutrons out of them as well. Thus, the more uranium nuclei has fissured, uh, the more of them will fission. This starts a chain reaction. And one most important point, when a uranium-5 nuclei fissions, a simply gigantic amount of thermal energy is released. Today, nuclear reactors are the most powerful source of energy. As mentioned earlier, 
the fission of uranium-5 nuclei release a very, 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 very large amount of energy. It's released in the form of heat and transferred to the cooler. The cooler takes heat from the core and transfers it to water in a special tank a steam generator. The water heats up, boils and turns into steam. Water steam rotates a turbine and the electric generator. This is how electricity is generated at nuclear power plants. In nuclear energy, the following are most often used to produce electricity. Water-water reactors with non-boiling or boiling water under pressure. Uranium graphite reactors with boiling water or cooled with carbon dioxide. Fast reactors, which are cooled by molten metal. Molten salt reactors and small modular reactors. Now let's talk a little more about each type of reactor. These are reactors in which the core is cooled with water. That is, water is a coolant. The IAEA organization has created its own classification, which is most often used in the global nuclear energy industry, since the operating principle of a nuclear power plants largely depends on the choice of coolant and moderator. The IAEA based its classification on these differences. PVR, pressurized water reactors, water-water reactors, reactor with pressurized water. In the CIS counters, which reactors are cooled by the abbreviation VVR. They use ordinary water as a coolant and moderator. Pressurized water reactors are the most common in the world. About 62% of all reactors. Pressurized water reactors are cheap and convenient because water does not ignite, does not harden, and is relatively safe to use. BVR boiling water reactor. The operating principle of a nuclear power plant using such a reactor is very similar to how a nuclear power plant operating with VVR operates. A boiling water reactor also uses ordinary water. Its only feature is the steam is generated immediately in the core. In a water-water reactor, water is first heated, which is later, after several stages, converted into steam. In boiling reactors, uh, heat is immediately transferred to boiling water, which instantly becomes hot steam. Boiling water reactors are quite common, accounting for 20% of all nuclear reactors in the world. Humanity has achieved its greatest success by concentrating on one reactor technology, making it the most advanced and accumulating the greatest amount of knowledge and experience. These are package water cool reactors, which today make up 95% of the world reactor fleet. Light water graphite reactor, a GVR, or uranium graphite reactor. This type of reactor use graphite as a moderator and ordinary water is a coolant. The operation scheme of the nuclear power plant launched for the first time in the world was based on a graphite water reactor Today, such reactors are rarely used. Pressurized heavy water reactor. In such reactors, heavy water is used as a coolant and moderator, otherwise called heavy hydrogen water or deuterium oxide. A high-temperature gas-cooled reactor is a helium-cooled graphite reactor that operates at two, three times the temperature of conventional reactors but at a lower power density. The concept has been in development since the 40s, but it's only in recent years that the technology has developed successfully. The basis of HTGR is the reactor runs on three structural isotopic TRISO particle fuel. TRISO fuel consists of the poppy-sized particles containing uranium, carbon, and oxygen. To contain nuclear products, the fuel is enclosed in three layers of carbon and ceramic shells. These particles are then formated into cylindrical pellets or spheres the size of billiard ball are called pebbles. This fuel has increased strength and is more resistant to neutron irradiation, corrosion, oxidation, and high temperatures. During operation, the pebbles slowly circulate through the reactor. 
while its spent part is removed from its lower part and the fresh portion is supplied in the, its place from above. Gas cooled fast reactor is also helium cooled, but has a higher power density than an HTGR. Initially, they were developed as a breeder reactors. That's reactors in which nuclear fuel is produced in quantities exceeding the needs of the reactor itself. This was achieved by converting thorium or non fissile isotopes of uranium into plutonium or fissile isotopes of uranium using fast neutrons instead of the thermal slow neutrons produced by conventional reactors. Advanced version of GFR reactors use ceramic uranium monocarbide fuel in the core, allowing operation at very high temperatures. The structure of such fuel makes it possible to achieve a high density of uranium atoms per unit volume of fuel. Let's look at fast reactor technology in a little more detail. In fact, most fast reactors are also liquid cooled. The only liquid coolant is the molten metal. For example, sodium fast reactor. In the cooling process of such a reactor, liquid sodium is used, which has a very good heat removal ability. The small size of this device allows for the use of the built-in and passive safety features for are not very effective in larger sodium reactors. In the United States, the fuel used is a metal alloy of uranium and zirconium clad with steel, while in Russia, France and Japan, uranium oxide fuel is preferred. These fuels have no thermal density, so if the reactor core gets too hot, at expense, causing the nuclear reaction to naturally dew out. Since the SFR reactor has a closed fuel cycle, its core is also very compact. In other words, uranium and plutonium are constantly recycled within the core, allowing the reactor to operate for decades within refueling. Fluoride cool high temperature reactor, or FHR. FHR reactors are high temperature reactors that are cooled not by helium, but by molten mixture of lithium and beryllium fluoride salts. These reactors have 10 times the power density of HTGRs using Teresa particle fuel technology. Compared to helium reactors, fluoride salts allow the reactor to operate at lower temperatures and future models of fluoride reactors will use pebble fuel. A molten salt reactor, MCR, is a type of low-pressure nuclear reactor in which molten salt serves as a both coolant and fuel. Before being formed into rods, pellets or pebbles, the fuel is mixture with a fluoride salt, which is passed through graphite or a similar moderator that generates slow neutrons and controls the reaction. Liquid salts reactor can operate at elevated temperature, but this creates problem with corrosion, so developments tend to favor cold modifications. However, uh, thanks to the combination of coolant and fuel, removing waste and the sampling new portion of fuel is much easier than in conventional reactors. The small modular reactor is a light water pressurized water reactor, essentially an improved version of the reactors in service today. Expect that they are more compact and can be mass produced like cars. Their goal is to reduce the cost of nuclear energy by introducing plant production technologies. Essentially, the idea to create small, standardized reactors of less than 300 megawatts each. Unlike conventional reactors, SMR reactors are not large civil engineering projects that can take 20 years to become operational and another 20 years to become profitable. Instead, as the name suggests, SMR reactors are built around a compact, simple design consisting of modules that include not only the reactor but also most of the ancillary components. This allows power plants to be assembled in factories or shipyards 
as ratchet modules and then transport it to site for assembly. The goal is not only to reduce cost, but also to radically reduce the construction time and certification of the plant for commissioning. Another advantage of SMRs is the ability to change the station configuration according to customer requirements. Small, relatively isolated communities can order single reactor plants, then conserve, for example, several thousand homes and businesses, while large cities can instant multi-reactor plants uh, that can provide electricity to millions of people. Because SMR reactors are small in size, they can be used for special purposes such as oil exploration or mounted military bases. Additionally, the models can be designed to be transported in the most appropriate manner, including barge, ships, trucks, trains, and even airships. SMR are also distinguished by the presence of passive safety system that requires virtually no electrical energy to operate and provide the supply of coolant in the event of an accident. They are easier to shield because they do not require massive concrete structures and can be easily installed both underground and on board ships or offshore platforms. So, we see that nuclear energy is currently developing at a rapid pace. Many countries have joined the process of constructing nuclear power plant on their territories. Many countries are thinking about starting their own nuclear program in the new future. All this indicates the prospects of nuclear energy and nuclear reactors as energy sources. Thank you for your attention. Bye.